first of all, thanks for coming on and speaking to the Sound Architect. We're very, very grateful to have you. How did your kind of journey through sound design and audio in voice begin? I was really little. This is probably a very similar story to a lot of people, but I played Super Mario Brothers for NES, and I was like, wow, I really like the music, and I love the sounds, And but that didn't solidify it for me. What really happened was when I played Super Mario 64, the music to the water level Dire Dire Docks was like mind-blowing to me, and I wanted to somehow recreate that. So I really worked as hard as I possibly could to like learn what goes into the design of the music. And I looked up everything that Koji Kondo had ever done and was just like, oh, this is like so amazing. And that's like, it was like around like 10 years old, I think for me, like I knew I wanted to do audio in games for like the rest of my life. Just for the benefit of the listeners, tell us a bit more about yourself and what, what you've done and what you do now. Right now, I'm mostly doing voice acting for gaming, which kind of came about really suddenly. I put out a demo reel last year, and then I started getting a lot of people contacting me for that. So now, mainly that's what I do, is just freelance sound design. Like, really, I'm winging it right now, but (laughs) I guess it's seeming to work. And I'm also doing music for a company called AdventureWorks. They do a lot of iPad and Android, and they're soon to be on Ouya. They're going to start doing games for the Ouya as well. And I do a lot of their soundtracks. Actually, I do all of their soundtracks. <laughs> but they're a great company. I love them. They, I kind of started off with them doing games and stuff. So they were the first people who really like kind of ushered me into the, the industry. I'm also doing sound design for them as well. And sound is so, one of the things that I haven't really explored too much into yet, but I really want to sound design is kind of like that un, it's like that uncharted territory and what i really would like to do is get some kind of huge library that i can just start with start with like the template yeah. and then get a better mic that's like good for traveling and just go from there but yeah that's that's what i'm doing right now and i'm involved with a lot of a lot of games that are in development and really want to go to the game developers conference that's like my next big thing yeah so expensive so, though right it's so expensive. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. crazy expensive, but <laughs> it's but it's so it's so worth it, Sam. Like I can't I can't tell you like my it was my life changed. It was crazy. Yeah, life changing. Like, you just go once and you just meet a phenomenal amount of great. You people meet you just... wonderful people and you get an insane amount of experience, like just for being there. You you yeah. get you really feel the energy that people exude, and and there's just a really really good good feeling that you get when you when you when you go and when you leave and you're like no I don't want to go back home. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think people in, in audio especially are just like we got to stick together they are very prone to giving advice and they are friendly and and just very supportive of what you do and it's great it's good it's good to be here <laughs> <laughs> well in game audio like this guy is just yeah, we just share everything. Whereas, like, if you look at other industries, like I know in a lot, a lot of times in the film industry, that people just kind of like, no, this is my secret. This is how I do it. That's it. Yeah, they, they yeah, kind of yeah. Hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that's, I mean, I, I don't think I could ever do that because someone had to reach out to me in order for me to get where I am. So I want to be that person to reach out to somebody else and help guide them and bring them in you know because I, I think it's it's just you got to pay it forward eventually <laughs> tell us a bit more about what you're doing at the moment can you tell us about what you've worked on or you know because obviously you've you kind of shared recently you were on killer instinct for the xbox one congratulations mm-hmm. so Thank anything you. else uh you can kind of tell us about in the pipeline let's see so i'm trying to think right now what i can share i, I did voices for a game called guns of vigorous online which is like a multiplayer and it's, it's online and and you basically are, are part of a steampunk airship crew. And you can be the captain, you can be the gunner, or you can be the engineer. And I provided two voices. One was like a really, you know, commanding, like, hey, we got to get this done and get stuff done. <laughs> and then the other one was like more of like a youth who is like, I'm going to be doing this. And I'm, you know, kind of haughty. Yeah. And, and, but really fun to do that. And, and then I played the actual game, and I was like, whoa, that's crazy. It's my voice. <laughs> and then I also did an animation 
for my friend Adam Gubman called Kakamega, which is a it's a musical. It's a rainforest musical, and it's right. it's an animation. <laughs> but I, and I haven't seen it yet, and I really want to. But it's going to start. It I believe it's going to hit December. And then uh, another one that I did voice work for was a game called Where's My Water, which is a Disney mobile game, and I basically did like little sounds for this alligator. I, he called them emotes, I believe. And I worked with David Ortega on that. It was cool to do because it's a really big game and I'm, I'm happy that he asked me to do it. And I also did Cadence for Crypt of the Necro Dancer, which is an indie game that's that was shown at PAX and got like really, really, really good responses. And that's going to be for Mac and PC. It's going to be on Steam. And it's basically like a rhythm dungeon crawler where oh, you nice. can, you have to beat monsters to the rhythm you have to do it on the beat and it's awesome it's absolutely so cool but yeah i get asked to do a lot of youtube stuff as well but they're like can you do voices for my channel i was like yeah sure but there are like so many it's like yeah it's hard to get to all of them <laughs> it's so. quite a good following on youtube as well yeah so a few videos you got quite a few subscribers on the youtube channel you obviously created quite a few i mean because you sing as well don't you yeah i, I love writing music as well as putting my own spin on it yeah. and i thought the last of us theme was really a well done song and just emotionally deep and very beautiful so i wanted to be able to kind of respond to that give my own take and add lyrics and vocals because i think that i, I really love singing to stuff like that so it was cool to to be able to do something and i also did dear mario which is Obviously, like my, my love for Mario, which is expressed <laughs> in a song, and that was that got a lot of good feedback as well because it's still about Mario, but it's about you know how Peach misses Mario, and in a way, it's like <laughs> how I miss Mario, how yeah. I miss being like a kid in my childhood and growing up with him, and how it's like oh we've kind of drifted apart a little bit, Mario. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's come a long way since the uh, the old NES and SNES games, hasn't he? Most, so. Yeah, most definitely. I wish you could play a game without remembering playing it again. You know, like you just started afresh and you could play the games if yeah. you never played it again. Your best oh, gosh, thing in the world to have great. that feeling. What game would you play if you could? If you were, if you had to play, pick any game to play yeah. it fresh? It's a, it's a tie between Resident Evil Two and Final Fantasy VIII. Really? Yeah. Nice. Those are some you know, two it's, big ones. You know, one of the few people I know that, that like Final Fantasy VIII. It's either Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy XI. Yeah. I, well, that's, that's what I, seems to get quite of... a lot of good response as well. I don't know why, but it seems to be like seven, ten, and eleven are the big ones. Yeah. But yeah, eight. I've actually awesome. never played a Final Fantasy game. Have you not? Oh, I recommend yeah. it. I mean, it, it's kind of hard. I tried to get a friend of mine to play it, and I think he's too used to the modern graphics now, so he was kind of like. <laughs> yeah it's yeah that's the thing that's hard all... <laughs> is when you go back to play a certain game and you know your friends are like oh my god i grew up with this game it's so good you're gonna love it and you go back to play it and you're like why why do you love this because it was so mind-blowing at the time exactly. you know to them and now that you're looking at it 10 years later what's so special about it you know it's it's that kind of this nostalgia thing that you can't really pass on to anybody else you just kind of have to accept that they like it and that it's their thing and hey buddy i'm not judging you yeah you know yeah, everyone <laughs> has like guilty pleasures of the old stuff i find the intermediate yeah. levels are the worst like um if, if you go really old school they're kind of cool to play because you accept they're a bit naff like mm -hmm. graphics wise or whatever but if you go back somewhere in the middle like if i ever play assassin's creed one again i just get really annoyed <laughs> it's like assassin's oh, really? creed one after playing the later assassin's creed you've just lost all your moves but it's still semi-good graphics so that you're expected yeah. to, to yeah. work well but it doesn't <laughs> see i think that's um that holds true for me as well i can go as far back as like the gamecube or ps2 i think and then that's where you know, that's kind of where I cut off the line of enjoyment because for me, I, I feel like games have to have a certain good graphical representation in order for me to really enjoy them. That's why I can handle like 8-bit or NES or SNES games because, you know, they're, they'll never really age, age. Yeah. They just, because they're, you know, pixelated, be, they'll just kind of look the same forever. Yeah, but like something like, way, like Ocarina of Time will not look good forever it just doesn't age it doesn't age well 
Yeah, you know? the N64 titles in general don't age amazingly. I mean, GoldenEye is a great game still, but the graphics have not right. aged. Definitely, very definitely, yeah. Not looking too good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what would you say has been the most challenging part of your career path so far, progressing to where you are now? I think the most challenging, you know, that's really, it's a good question. The first thing that comes to mind is being happy with what you're given. And while I am, you know, absolutely ecstatic, there are some times where I want to like further like the voice or whatever I want. I want to make it something else. And, you know, you have to stick with what the director is, is giving you. That's the thing where I'm like, okay, well, I want to please the director, but I also want to make it sound good enough to where I enjoy doing it. I guess that's like one of the biggest challenges, but it's really not even that big. You know, I I think that's something that I have to learn how to just let go of my voice and send it out into the world. And, and, you know, cause it's, while it is part of me, it's also something that I'm selling. So I have to detach myself from it. Yeah. You have to. So that's that's the hardest thing is detaching myself. I think. (laughs) (laughs) You say you've only been in it. A little to the amount of time. So right. what, was, what was that kind of turning point where you thought, ah, oh, I'm in? Like, you know, when did it, or is it just gradual progression? Or did you get to a point where you realized, right, actually, no, it's actually oh, it kicking was like, off now. It was from like this, like right down here to the poof. It was just, it just took off because I decided to make, I kind of jumped in and I really, I made a really reckless decision. And what I did was I, I had been, saving up for school and I had gotten an extra grant and I was like, wow, I just kind of got some extra money here. And I was on the game developers conference website. I don't know how I got there, but I had been following game of Sutra for a while and they were like, Hey, check out, you know, get your game developers conference tickets because this early bird pass is going soon. And I was like, well, whatever. So I checked it out and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is really expensive. But I really want to go. I really want to go. I bought the ticket. I didn't have any idea how I was going to get there because I bought the ticket before I even booked my hotel or booked airfare or anything like that. I just bought the ticket. And so I got that and I was like, okay, okay, now what? So (laughs) it was just like, and I got it in January. So it was like the next two months were just about me saving and planning and saving and planning. And then I eventually, I eventually got there because I was like determined to go to this conference. And, um, and then it was just like, I just kind of went forward from there. You know, I didn't really have a choice because there were a lot of people who were like, Hey, we really want music. We really want, you know, your voice on this project. And I was like, all right, awesome. And I, I still don't really think that I'm not like, you know, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a part of the industry, <sighs> but, but there is, you have to, I guess you have to like learn that kind of bravado after a while, not bravado, but a confidence. Oh, I know what you mean. You have yeah. To, yeah. You know, cause I don't want to, I don't want to just be like, yes, I am a professional voice actor because I guess professional means getting paid and I do get paid for voice acting. So yeah, in that respect I am, but there's still tons of things that I have to learn. So basically I talk to myself in strange voices for money. What advice would you give? on putting together a voice reel? What are the most important things that you would advise doing? I would definitely advise putting your strongest voices first. And by strongest, I mean the things that the voices that you can do the best. And that will most likely be in your natural voice, not like, you know, little kid voice or, you know, yeah. don't hear husky voice. It'll, it'll probably be in your confident voice. Like an authoritative, normal voice. Right, right. And something that really stands out, you know, something that you feel that you can do well. And make your demo reel, like, not more than a minute. I've seen some people who are, you know, they're like, yeah, you can make it two minutes. But people generally lose interest after, like, the first 30 seconds of a reel. So, I mean, I honestly, I... I'm like so spacey that I, I sometimes don't even listen to something for more than 10 seconds. So I like to, I like to put my strongest stuff first because I know personally I would get like, I get bored. I, I'm like, I'm like that way with my iPod. It's, it's like, if I don't like a song within the first 10 seconds, I'm just like, okay, nope, nope, moving on, moving on, moving on. But yeah, make it like a minute and do just a range after the, after the strongest ones do just like a range of, 
of, of, you know, put Arnold Schwarzenegger in there, but make it your own script, you know, create your own script because companies will recognize you know, if you're using something else, if you're using something that's already been created. So I guess I would just recommend to write something or get someone to write your script for you just to read. But yeah, do a variety of voices, your own script. Oh, and uh, another thing is like the voice quality. Yeah, I guess get a really good microphone, but get a really good program to mix it in. Because if you have a great microphone, but no way to mix it, like no way to make the audio sound good, then it's not going to really help you because you're not going to be able to edit out the noise. You're not going to be able to, you know, make the dynamics, mix the dynamics to where you want them to be. And you're going to have to make it sound really clear and, you know, crisp. So I definitely recommend going with a program with a good audio program, as well as a good mic and a pop filter. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, whenever you speak into a microphone, I did that for a while and you know, my words would catch on my W and my P's and my B's. And I'm just like, Oh, I need something. <laughs> and when it came to like practicing, do you think just like practice all the time? Because I mean, I find myself doing stupid voices all the time anyway, without even thinking about it. Yeah. But do you find yourself doing that as well? Like you'll just do it when talking to friends or like in general and get used to doing it in front of people? Oh yeah, definitely. I was kind of a theater kid. So I would do a lot of just, you know, messing around and being stupid with people. But yeah, I, I talk to myself a lot. And when I'm in the shower, I talk to myself. When I'm in the car, I talk to myself. I talk to my steering wheel. I'm just like, you know, if, as if I were an angry captain or something. And my poor steering wheel just gets beaten up. That was when I was in South Bend, though, because right now I'm in Indianapolis and don't have a car. Right. But when I did, I was talking to my steering wheel. And yeah, I find that it's a good way to just keep your chops fresh. But I also like to listen to other people's voices as well, because I find that if I, I listen to my voice for too long, I just get, I kind of get stuck in that frame of mind. And I like to be able to have some form of reference that's not my own. Yeah. <laughs> I, li- I like to be able to keep it fresh, basically. Yeah, you need to kind of refresh your ears after a while that you're hearing yes. the same sort of thing. Yes, absolutely. Who is your voice acting idol right now? Oh, gosh, probably Girls Laura Bailey because she's. Yeah insane and awesome <laughs> and so adorable that I like I, I just want to seriously hug her and be friends with her and she's so cool I would be Laura Bailey and then I've, I've asked my friend D.B. Cooper for advice quite often and I went to her panel at GDC and seriously that that woman is amazing she is so professional and and she helped me with my website and you know anything that i i need advice with i always post in the game audio you know i post questions and she's always like right there you know and it's it's great because i feel like she's a veteran in the industry and really knows what she's talking about and you know the fact that she would take the time to respond is it feels good (laughs) so so she's someone that i really admire and then my mom, because she is has been involved with theater for a while, and she's also a voiceover. She's a voiceoverist, and she did a lot of commercials, and she has a great voice. I think those those three. And then then for men, oh gosh, I think the first one that comes to mind is Eager Raptor because he's extremely internet famous. Like he's really well known, and he did a lot of that by himself. You know, he did a lot of self marketing. He just kept doing it. And that's why I really admire is that persistence. And that's kind of what I, I strive to do myself is just just keep going. Just keep working. You know, don't just not do it one day. <laughs> and he has a great voice, too. So would your number one bit of advice be then don't give up? Yeah, the number one thing I would say is just, just keep going. If you have a day where, you know, you're kind of down on yourself and you don't feel and you're not feeling it, research what other people have done. Research how other people have marketed themselves, what they did to get to their goal. You know, look up your role model and look at their Wikipedia and look at their life story, you know, and and then try to emulate that. Do what you can because everyone has the opportunity. Everyone has the same opportunity. It's just how people choose to use that opportunity is what sets them apart from other people. So get yourself, get an agent. Put your marketing reel out there. Put your commercial animation stuff out there. Make yourself a website. Do whatever you possibly can to promote yourself. You know, I look at it as planting seeds. And 
what I do is I plant a seed on YouTube, which is, you know, a video or something. And I let that grow and I let the people, you know, send me feedback about that. Send me emails and maybe even jobs. I plant a seed on Twitter, Facebook, any sort of social media that you possibly can. Put on SoundCloud. Put your, put your stuff on LinkedIn. Do everything that you possibly can to make yourself more well-known. Let people know about you, you know. That's, that's number two. Number one is don't give up. Number two, put yourself out there. Those yes. are the two main things that will get you jobs. Yes, in. absolutely. Absolutely. Because self-marketing is like the biggest thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely I have other people pulling for me. I have a lot of people supporting me right now. But a lot of it is I, I like to propagate what I'm doing myself. So. Well, all of that comes off the back of doing that in the first place, right? All these people that help you and the support that you've got is because you've made people aware of what you want to do. And exactly. What exactly. So. You know, I've got, I've got family behind me. I've got a great family who has always supported me in whatever I've done. And that's helped tremendously because, you know, you have that home base who's, who's yeah. always there for you and, and ready when you need them. But then I've also got a, a community of professionals who I trust and I listen to and I really admire. And I'm, I'm happy that they know me. I'm happy that I know them. And it's a good connection to have. And then third would be, you know, find your niche, find your group of people that you that you trust and you confide in and that you respect. So third would definitely be good, good community in whatever you do. What would be your dream project to work on? What would be your dream character, for example? Or dream, even if it's just dream type of game, what would be your dream project? I would love to someday be the voice for a Zelda game. And right. that is currently, that probably won't happen because they don't talk <laughs> in Zelda games. But if they ever do, I would love to be the person. I would love to be the female character or male character. I don't care. I would love yeah, to be a character that talks in a Zelda <laughs> game. But but then another part of me is like, I don't want them to do that because I love the Zelda franchise so much as it is. And I love how they don't speak. Oh, actually, you put me down for something in the Bioshock series because that would be awesome. I would love to voice act in the Bioshock series. Oh, my gosh. I love Bioshock. All of them, or just the most recent one, or any of the Bioshocks? Anyone. Bioshock? Anyone. I will, I will scream in a bathroom. <laughs> that can be my only thing. I don't care. I will do it. I love those games. They're great. That pretty much covers most of the questions I have. Yay! Cool. Well, thanks again, Elizabeth. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. Same to you, Sam. Thanks so much for uh, having me do this. This is awesome.